Surface Sand Control. This module explores surface sand control, addressing one of the common challenges in well testing operations, sand production. It begins with the concept and mechanisms behind sand production, detailing how and why it occurs during reservoir flow. Learners will examine the effects of sand production on equipment, flow assurance, and overall test performance. The module then focuses on surface sand control techniques, highlighting key equipment such as the sand separator, dual pot sand filter, and cyclonic desander, explaining their design, function, and operational considerations. Finally, it emphasizes operation safety and best practice guidelines, ensuring proper handling and prevention of equipment erosion, blockages, and safety hazards during well testing. Sand production concept. Sand production associated with oil and gas wells is one of the oldest problems facing the petroleum industry. This problem occurs throughout the world in wells producing from younger tertiary age reservoirs, particularly in the Miocene and Pliocene age sands. Typically, these formations are weakly consolidated by a combination of argillaceous cementing materials, the interaction of intergranular friction and in situ stresses, capillary forces and some cases by the viscosity of the fluids in place. Sand production mechanism. In weakly consolidated formation, the stresses caused by the fluids flowing into the wellbore are often sufficient to cause fine particles to agitate. In return, the throttling effect caused by these particles lodging in poor throats near the wellbore redirects the fluid flow pattern, thereby altering the direction and magnitude of the stress fields, leading additional particles to being dislodged. Once the destabilizing forces exceed the formation strength, increased sand production will follow. As an example, a formation may produce sand free when producing 100% oil. When water begins to flow through the matrix, the drag resistance of the water phase flowing past the water wetted sand grains increases, causing the well to start producing sand. Water production also severely reduces a formation's strength due to the dispersion of amorphous bonding materials. The amount of sand produced depends on the type of fluid based on viscosity, velocity, and water cut, and the type of formation based on permeability, grain size, and bonding material. Sand production effects. Operational problems related to sand production vary from expensive sand handling problems to the complete loss of a productive zone, or even the possibility of loss well control due to eroded surface equipment. 1. Sand erosion. It is caused by the presence of solids combined with high fluid velocity. It can occur in both downhole and surface equipment. Downhole erosion is most likely to occur in blast joints, tubing, screen or slotted liners. At surface it occurs heavily at equipment upstream of the separator, when it accumulates and no longer has the enough speed. Example in tubing and pipework, in the zones of diameter restriction and turbulence, such as choke manifolds and elbows. 2. Loss of production. Erosion is more severe when the sand is produced with gas, or when produced fluids are in turbulent flow. High pressure gas containing sand particles and expanding through a surface choke is the most hazardous situation due to the associated high velocity. Excessive erosion at this point could lead to a complete loss of well control. Therefore, loss of production is the most important reason for controlling sand production. 3. Sand disposal. It's a common problem in fields producing from unconsolidated sands. A sand production rate of 0.1% of the produced fluid would generate 5.62 cubic feet of solids per 1,000 barrels of production. This would represent a significant problem to deal with an offshore platform producing several thousands barrels daily. This is even more significant as environmental concerns require that any oil be separated from the solids before disposal overboard, or require that the sand be transported to shore for disposal. Sand production is one of the serious problems during testing a well. It's difficult to control, handle, and dispose. And whenever it's present, a special equipment and procedure are introduced to the test program in order to perform the job safely and in reliable manner.
A sand removal unit is used to trap the sand or separate it from the flowing hydrocarbons for reliable and safe measurements. Whenever solids are produced during a well test or cleanup operations, sand handling equipment is required. The main objective is to avoid erosion on equipment caused by high flow velocity and the presence of solids. For gas wells, particular attention should be paid to the setup. The type of purpose-built equipment used for sand handling depends on the type of solids produced, such as formation sand or fracturing flowback. The sand is being controlled with a variety of methods and techniques at the bottom hole and at the surface, which is our concern, specifically in surface well testing. In brief, slotted liners, screens, and gravel packing systems are the most common methods used downhole. At surface, in well testing, three types of sand removal units are used, which are described in details in the next section. Sand separator, dual pot sand filter, and cyclonic desander. Sand separator. What is a sand separator? Sand separator is a pressure vessel that removes sand and other sediments from drilling mud in the oil and gas industry. This machine can help prevent common problems associated with sand in oil wells, such as erosion and plugging. Why is a sand separator necessary on an oil rig? In the absence of a sand separator, downstream processing of the well mud will become complicated. This would put unnecessary pressure on the extraction systems on the oil rig, consuming irrational amounts of energy and resources. Efficient sand separators can prolong the life of downstream mud processing equipment. It is ideally suited for well cleanup after a sand fracturing treatment, when a large volume of sand can be lifted up during the initial flow back phase. It is located downstream of choke manifold. It is an H2S service unit and exist in 1345 PSI or 1440 PSI working pressure units. Principle. A sand separator operates on the principle of centrifugal and gravitational separation of particulate matter. The separation is based on the weight of the particles, with heavier particles being pushed to the bottom, while lighter ones stay on the top. Particularly, the heavier sand particles reach the bottom of the separator, from where they are easily removed. Meanwhile, the lighter oil and gas component of the drilling fluid stays on the top. Smaller particles need to be further filtered out after the sand has been separated. Sand removal through the sand line enables continuous operation. The fluid will pass with the sand through the vessel for a retention time, through which gravity forces will take place causing the sand to be accumulated at the bottom of the vessel, then to the disposal line. Sand separator variety. Sand separators can be two phases or three phases. Two phases sand separators separate sand from the liquid oil component. On the other hand, three phases sand separators can separate sand, oil, and gas from one another. Sand separators can also come in various shapes, such as cylindrical, spherical and cyclonic. Spherical sand separators are known to provide the best gas, liquid and sand capacities. However, cyclonic sand separators typically offer a better separation efficiency. Dual pot sand filter. The dual pot sand filter is used to remove sand and other particles from well effluent to prevent erosion of downstream equipment. This filter is typically located after the wellhead, upstream of the choke manifold. It consists of two 46 liters filter pots and interconnecting piping with bypass valve and bypass drain. The frame mounted pots have telescopic lifting support for convenient filter replacement. It exists in 5000s or 10,000s PSI working pressure unit and it is H2S service. Typical applications are cleanups, barefoot completions, and maximum sand free rate tests. Principle. Dual pot sand filters are pressure drop independent, where solids laden multiphase fluids pass through a screen causing the solids and fluids to separate. The solids accumulate and are stored in the holdup section of the filter vessel, and when full, is isolated and bypassed for solids removal. The maximum sand concentration for continuous operation is about 10 pounds of solids per minute or 4.5 kilograms of solids per minute, 
based on a 50% solid slurry with a solid specific gravity of 2.7. The fluid flow is being passed by the pots, which filter the sand out of the flow and send it to the drain line in the unit. Cyclonic desander. The cyclonic desander is a wellhead desander designed to remove solid particles from hydrocarbon and water effluent during either the well cleanup or the recovery of formation sand in production. The desander is also specifically designed to flow back effluent containing prop pant after a fracture treatment. The unit is positioned as close as possible to the well head, upstream of the choke manifold, to intercept solids from high velocity effluent streams before severe erosion occurs. It is available in 5000 psi or 10,000 psi working pressure, and it is an H2S service unit. Principle During operation, the entire well stream is fed into the desander vessel, where separation takes place inside the cyclonic inserts. The separated solids fall down into an accumulator, which can be isolated, depressurized, and flushed. During this purging process, the desander can be left online with solids collected in the holding space beneath the insert in the desander vessel. These solids pass to the accumulator once it is reopened to the process. Performance depends on effluent conditions such as particle size distribution, effluent to particle density contrast, effluent viscosity, and inlet velocity. However, field results have shown the device to be extremely durable under a wide variety of operations. The insert size is selected to meet the specified design conditions for a range of flow rates, fluid properties, and sand loads. The desander and accumulator vessels are separated by a double block and bleed ball valve system, and the accumulator is also drained through a similar arrangement. The maximum sand concentration for continuous operation is about 10 pounds per minute of solids based on a 50% solid slurry with a solid specific gravity of 2.7. Operation safety and guidelines. On any job involving sand filters, we're dealing with two primary hazards, erosion and high pressure. These aren't just technical concerns, they're serious safety risks. So it's essential that all personnel remain alert and follow strict safety protocols at all times. Now onto equipment safety. Erosion is more aggressive than it may seem. It can literally cut through a pipe in minutes, and in the process, cause irreversible damage to an entire piping network. That's why we monitor velocity in the pipework closely, because velocity is directly linked to flow rates, and higher flow rates increase erosion risk. By being mindful of these factors, we help ensure a safer working environment and longer equipment life. Damage prevention consists in limiting both the fluid velocity and the quantity of solids present. Use high-pressure sand trap between flow head and choke manifold in order to remove a maximum of sand grains upstream of the choke manifold. Increase where possible the ID of the flow lines to decrease velocity. Decrease where possible the choke diameter to decrease the well effluent flow rate. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.